Director of Marketing here at 1E and your host for today's event. We're very excited for everyone to join us as we discuss how one of the largest retail banks in the U.S. was able to significantly reduce the cost and time to migrate their ATMs to Windows 7. The migration will be completed remotely and using zero-touch technology, thereby minimizing any downtime and disruption. In today's webinar, we're joined by 1E consultant Jim Besden. Jim has been working with 1E Solutions since 2008 and has been involved in the area of systems management since 1999. Jim will share with you strategies and techniques that leading banks are using to automate, accelerate, and reduce software distribution risks on their ATMs, maximize reliability and performance of ATMs, and greatly improve the customer experience and considerably reduce software and operating system deployment timelines and cost. Just a few housekeeping items before we get started. You'll see a question box on the right-hand side of your screen uh, if you're using a, a laptop or a desktop or in the upper right-hand corner if you're on a mobile device where you can submit questions at any time during the presentation. We will address those questions at the end. The session is being recorded, and you will receive access to the slides and recording to view again or pass to your peers. With that said, let's begin. Jim? OK, great. Thanks, Thanks everyone, for attending the webinar on automating ATM management. My name is Jim Besden, as Laurie said. I'm principal consultant with 1E. Today, like, what we'd like to cover with you is, hold on, I'm getting the slides advanced. There we go. We're going to be going over a recent case or a recent project one has been doing with a large financial institution in helping them automate the deployment of a new solution to their ATMs. We're going to talk um, a good bit about how to automate, accelerate, and reduce software distribution risk on ATMs, as well as maximize the reliability and performance, and considerably reduce software um, and operating system deployment timelines and costs. So what we're going to cover today in this case is a bit about the project. This project involves a large financial institution with multiple ATM hardware vendors as a result of several acquisitions. All of the ATMs are still running Windows XP. The FI had a desire to move to a multi-vendor software solution. And they also wanted to deploy the solution without having to visit every ATM in the fleet. Some of the challenges in the ATM environment that were getting in the way of their desires were that Windows XP was preventing the move to a modern MVS platform. As most MVS vendors are not writing software for XP anymore. The expense of extended support for XP was also a problem for them. With each year passing now since the end of support from Microsoft, it's becoming more costlier than ever to keep running XP. They were also managing multi, multiple vendors, platforms, hardware, software, and configuration. With a different ATM hardware vendor each running their own platform, the, it's more time consuming and costly to maintain and update the fleet. And what this led to also with, the multi, with different software platforms running on it was an inconsistent customer experience. Um, for example, a customer could visit an ATM in, on one block and have one experience, go to an ATM on another block, and it would be a completely different experience for them. So the high-level approach to the project – sorry, I have a little issue there. – was – the, VIN, the FI needed to select the MVS vendor. The, the FI in this case reviewed various MVS solutions and chose a vendor that could develop a solution to meet their requirements. The next step was to develop the MVS solution.
And working with the MVS vendor, the ATM, the ATM vendors, as well as the FI's internal business units, the MVS solution was developed. The next step was to deploy the MVS solution. And although the MVS vendor, the ATM hardware vendors, are experts in their own solutions, performing mass operating system and software deployments in a zero-touch manner is not something they typically do. There were several challenges that they did not have answers to. Some of those challenges were zero-touch conversions are required. This was an FI requirement due to the large number of systems that would have to be upgraded in a short period of time. On-site attended conversions are not feasible. The time and cost associated with the technician touching each ATM was too expensive. With the size of the Windows 7 build, the MVS installation, and other supporting software, getting 7 plus gigabytes of content across the WAN without impacting normal ATM business traffic, where link speeds range from anywhere from a well-connected local office to a 3G, 4G cellular connection, all the way down to legacy frame relay circuits. It seemed like an impossible challenge to get all that content out to the systems. The vendors are not familiar with zero-touch deployment methods. The MVS vendor, along with the ATM hardware vendors, are respected experts in their own technology and equipment. However, they do not normally perform mass operating system <coughs> upgrades and software deployments like this in a zero-touch manner. This is one E's areas of expertise. The one E methodology involves the first step of analyzing and remediating the environment. The next step is we come in and we develop a deployment solution. Then we thoroughly test that solution. At that point, once we've tested the solution, we'll begin what we call pre-caching the content out to the ATMs. We'll initially start with a small group and use those for a pilot. Once the FI and everybody is comfortable with the results of the pilot, we'll move into a full production deployment. So some of the things we cover when we analyze and remediate are the ATM hardware configurations. We'll utilize the existing SCCM inventory. And in this case, this FI uses Microsoft System Center Configuration Manager to manage their ATM environment. We'll look at the hardware configurations to ensure that all systems meet the requirements for Windows 7 and the MPS solution. Those that do not are remediated with a combination of either automated methods and or hardware upgrades that are often performed by the ATM hardware vendors. We also analyze the ATM, operating, ATM vendor operating system builds. Each, each hardware vendor's Windows operating system build is analyzed. We look at it to make sure it can be deployed with a zero-touch method. And we'll go back to the ATM vendor and app with any questions and address them accordingly. The MVS solution, the hardware vendor specific applications, as well as the FI's own applications are analyzed to ensure that they can be deployed using zero-touch methods. And an extensive review of the WAN circuits is performed to determine the amount of lead times for pre-caching the content. Then we move into developing the solution. We'll perform what are called pre-flight checks, which are a series of tests that are performed at the beginning of the deployment to ensure that the content is fully cached, the hardware meets minimum specifications, the ATM is not currently running on, let's say, the UPS battery backup, et cetera. If a problem is detected at the deployment time, the ATM will be returned to service in its current state, and the issue is reported back. Then we, the next phase in our process is developing the zero-touch task sequence. Zero-touch means that the end-to-end -end process of the ATM does not require any hands-on intervention. There will still be a small percentage of the ATM fleet which will require um, a visit to perform an upgrade either due to a hardware limitation or a connectivity issue. In these cases, media that closely mirrors the content and methodology in the zero-touch strategy is provided to field technicians. This ensures a consistent build process using either the zero-touch method or an on-site technician build. 
In the weeks prior to the scheduled deployment date of a group of ATMs, a well-planned strategy is developed that will utilize OneE's Nomad product for pre-caching 100% of the content required to perform the ATM migration locally. Custom reports are developed within SCCM to monitor the success of both the pre-caching and the status of the upgrades in near real time. This allows any issues or errors to be addressed in a timely manner. Since there may be a small number of unforeseen failures with, with the hardware, communication circuits being down, power outages, etc., plans are put in place to report on the failures, handle them accordingly, etc. So in some cases, this could mean rescheduling the deployment after an issue is resolved. In other cases, such as a hardware failure, a technician would be dispatched to address the issue and perform the upgrade using the on-site intended build method. In the testing phase, the zero-touch process is tested extensively on all hardware variations in a variety of network connections in the lab environment. The post-deployment testing and validation of the MVS solution is delivered using zero touch. Then we work with the FIS testing team um, to make sure the MVS solution works as expected once it's been delivered with the zero touch methodology. In the, we, we discussed the pre-caching with 1E Nomad. In this case, the Windows 7 image, the MVS platform software, ATM vendor XFS, and other supporting software is staged on the ATM in the weeks prior to the scheduled deployment. We do that delivering it to thousands of ATMs simultaneously. While the content is being delivered, 1E Nomad protects ATM business traffic. It does this by using 1E's Nomad's reverse QoS technology. ATM business traffic is given priority over the other content downloading, ensuring no customer impact. And with 1E Nomad's reporting, we use that to ensure the highest level of success by tracking the caching process and the deployment readiness. Once we move into the pilot, we, pilot systems are, are selected to be representative of the fleet. They cover all model variations and network connection scenarios. We start with small groups of ATMs. And then, and as the pilot, after the first few pilots, sorry, we review the results and remediate any issues. Then we expand the circle by increasing the size of each pilot group each time until the FI is comfortable with the results. Once we're ready to move into the full deployment, Again, as in the pilot, we begin with small groups, anywhere from 30 to 40, 50 systems at a time on the, in the first waves. Using FCCM's deployment monitoring, as I mentioned earlier, the deployment team can detect issues and choose the proper method of remediation. This could be as simple as restarting the deployment if needed or dispatching a field technician. As the FI's comfort level grows with each wave of deployment, the number of ATM is, ATMs is increased to maximize the capacity that the FI can handle being converted in a single night. Once the deployment is over and the FI is you know, satisfied with the results, in the future state, the, the solutions that we've put together live beyond the conversion. Um, for example, the solution that's developed not only addresses the immediate deployment needs, but is also used to allow for remote rebuilding of ATMs if needed. And it, it, a, a case may be where there's some software malfunctioning, and it, it just makes more sense to reload, just completely reload the ATM. From a remote console in FCCM, one of the technicians on site, uh, or actually in the central monitoring center, can just effectively refresh the ATM. It will rebuild itself because you, because all of the content was previously cached using one of these Nomad products. It lives on the hard drive. It's, it's continually updated with the latest and greatest versions.
then with 20 no managed successful normal software and update deployments with zero business um, traffic impact. And now with the solution in place, you have the tools and the templates for moving to Windows 8, Windows 10, or beyond. Because of the framework that you've already established with the one e, with Money's Nomad and the Zero Touch methodology, when it comes time to upgrade again, it's simply a matter of slap, snapping in the new OS and software into an existing template. You, you would repeat the same process. We would go through again um, a, a design a analysis phase, walk right back through the process, but this time it would be much a more rapid succession through each phase because a lot of the issues were encountered on the previous project um, were, would be known and we could work right through them. So we talked about a little bit about the 1E Nomad solution and how it plays into this. What 1E, how 1E Nomad works is to, idea, what we do is protect business traffic. 1E only uses a percentage of the available bandwidth that's on the network link. For example, in this diagram, we have a, an SDCM server in the, in the operations center. Represented in blue across this wide area network is the normal ATM business traffic. In orange is the 1E Nomad traffic, as if we were currently downloading some content, let's say the operating system or other pieces. So what 1E does by default is take about 80% of what's available, and we can see that little bit of white space at the top. Now when business traffic comes along, 1E Nomad immediately yields to that business traffic. It backs off and allowing it to pass through. And in the diagram we can see that the ATM business traffic has a priority on the line and 1E is just trickling data through and yet still leaving some available bandwidth there. Then once the ATM, the normal business traffic is finished, Nomad traffic resumes utilizing what's available on the link and it delivers whatever content, whether it's a Windows 7 image, new XFS software, or new MVS solution. Okay. So who is 1E? If you're not familiar with us, 1E's mission is to reduce the cost of running IT for our customers and puts businesses back in control. 1E's been directly involved in over a half a million XP to Windows 7 migrations using our zero-touch methodologies. We've done this on everything from normal workstations and laptops to kiosk systems, point-of-sale systems, and ATMs. We've indirectly, with our customers who use our products and our methodology, have been involved. Our products have been used to migrate millions of systems from seven from XP to seven. And So in summary, 1E zero touch deployment methodology reduces the time and expense of an XP to 7 migration. We ensure no interruption to ATM business traffic, and our solutions live beyond the upgrade to deliver ongoing value. All right. So that was it, Lori, what I wanted to cover. Do we have any questions? Okay, do, yeah. Um, thank you all for attending. You'll see this last slide has a few points of interest, mine and Jim's contact information. Also some links to uh, more information about the solutions you saw, Nomad and our Zero Touch Windows migration technology. If you go to the links, there are down, uh, white papers and more information that you can download. And there's also a link to our upcoming webinars, which are listed on the website, so you can go there as well. So um, pri prior to uh, addressing your questions, I want to thank you again for joining us. And just remind you that if you'd like to submit a question, um, you can uh, submit them in the question box to the right-hand side of your screen or the upper right-hand corner if you're on a mobile device. So let's, um, we've got some questions queued up here. Let's start with the first one, Jim. How long does it take to get the upgrade pushed to the ATM? Okay, well, that can vary depending on the type of connection or the WAN link. For example, in a local branch office, the content being about 7 gigs with 1E Nomad throttling traffic, working around traffic that's already going past, um, we've seen anywhere from 12 to 24 hours or so to get that kind of content out to single ATMs. 
Now, when we move into, let's say, the 3G or 4G cellular connected systems, um, again, we were seeing about, um, I would say, I think around 48 to 50 to 60 hours, depending on whether it was 3G, 4G. Now, when it comes down to very slow links, let's say an older frame relay link, um, the process would take several weeks. Um, I think we, we, in worst case, we've, we're, we've seen about three weeks of an estimated time to get the content down over a very slow frame relay type link. But the advantage is with 1E is that even though, it, I mean, it, it's just working around the business traffic. So on this very slow link, it's just slipping a little block of data through at a time as it can. And ultimately, the, the, on the ATM, the Nomad agent is just keeping track in order and then doing CRC checks and hashing when all the data is finally there to ensure it's valid. Okay, okay thanks. Um, the next question we have, Jim, uh, what other challenges outside of the upgrade of the operating system and software have you encountered? Uh, again, with the... You know, several of the challenges are when you when you analyze the fleet of systems, whether it's ATMs or anything else, you're going to find um, you know hardware that doesn't meet the minimum specifications, things like that. But from an ATM perspective, another thing we've encountered is the back-end processing that has to occur during migrations. The FI in this case that we've been working with has been um, working on solutions to be able to increase the no, the velocity um, per night that they can handle in the back end processing. And one e is working with um, some of the internet network banking providers to under, to see what can be done to automate these processes as well. All right. Okay. Um, another question we have here. Um, when it comes to packaging to remote deployment, what are the requirements on how to build? Typically, what we'll, we, we need to see is a package that can run with no human intervention as the, you know, on the ATM. So, it, so basically, it, it's just a, what we call a silent install. Mm -hmm. And for example, if um, your MVS platform software at the end had a prompt that said, OK, finish, we need to have a way to suppress that prompt or acknowledge it automatically. Without it, so it could the process could continue on. Okay, great. Um, uh, uh, another question: um, Can you speak to some of the financial benefits that are realized from going to this um, technology and this approach? Well, the, the the biggest one is the reduced cost of not having to dispatch a technician to every ATM location to perform the upgrade in an attended manner. And like I said, there will always be cases where, you know, a, a technician needs to go on site due to either hardware failure. But the, the goal is to reduce the, the cost by not having anyone show up on site. And, we, and so what happens is we, like I say, stage the content. Then on the day of deployment, we execute it. Um, that execution normally occurs in the overnight hours or early morning hours. So when that no one shows up at the ATM, it takes it out of service, the, the ATM is upgraded, the next morning it's online with the new system. No one's had to intervene from a, you know, on-site cost. I don't have exact figures from our FI in this case on, you know, the cost per technician versus, you know, their back-end deployment monitoring, but it, it's significantly less because they can do more in a, you know, a single night than having to pay all the technicians to go out individually. Okay, great. Uh, another question we have is, so will, will it be up to the ATM software vendor to create the scripts to transfer the ATM specific data? I'm sorry, repeat that again, please. Will it be up to the ATM software vendor to create the scripts to transfer ATM specific data? Um, we would work with the, we work with the vendors to address that. Um, so, like I say, we're, you know, it's a partnership between the FI, the MVS provider, and the um, ATM hardware vendors um, working together. And like I say, 1E can, you know, with our, we have fairly extensive knowledge on, you know, automating 
whether it's software deployments or migrating settings from various types of applications. So we would work with each vendor to ensure that they can, you know, their settings can be migrated accordingly. Okay. Um, and then another question, how many systems can be migrated each day? The, from the zero touch process, it, I mean, we work with, um, in this case, um, from, you know, for just from a deployment of the operating system and installing software, I, I don't want to say limitless, but it can be in the thousands. The limitation, again, comes back to a lot of the back-end processing, reconciliation processes, how much of those are manual, what the FI or whoever is having to do that work can handle. But ideally, um, you know, a lot of, you know, in the, in the particular project we're working on currently, the FI is comfortable with about 300 a day is what we want to target. And again, that's based on the back-end processing. But you know, working with some customers, we've seen you know, in you know, when we're talking about just normal you know system migrations outside ATMs, we've seen as the velocity is close to two thousand a day, with you know no sweat off anybody's back. Great. Okay, that's it for our questions today. I want to thank everybody again for joining us. If for some reason you have a question and you didn't have a chance to submit it, just reach out to either Jim or myself. And uh, as I said, you will get a copy of the slides and a link to the presentation. Uh, so you'll have our contact details. Um, and if you're interested in further discuss discussion, just reach out to me and I'll connect you with the appropriate person here at 1E. Uh, thank you again. Uh, please keep an eye out for information on our next webinar. We look forward to seeing you soon. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you.